guy was out here a year ago this summer, they had 35. But it was a beautiful night. Yeah, and then the eight of you came out. start now. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Advent Cafe. We are very blessed this evening to have Mari and Gary leading our music for us tonight. And uh, we also have uh, Rob Duncan, Reverend Rob Duncan, back as our guest preacher tonight. Well, you're not really guest because you're part of our community, but, uh, but he is our preacher tonight, and uh, we look forward to his words of wisdom. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, this, this piece that we're starting with, Before You I Kneel, whenever I sing it now, I think of all of the controversy in the United States with kneeling during a NFL games and, and not. And, and I was recently reading a passage um, from the Old Testament that was talking about Solomon's uh, construction of the temple. And the first thing that he did was he got in there and he knelt before the altar and, and, and prayed. And, and I was really amazed because I thought, yeah, that is, that is what the, the church is there for, what the sanctuary is there for. And, um, and I was just thinking that um, when we when we kneel, that we are kneeling before the Lord, and and not, um, not and to honor God and not harm any.
Before you I kneel, my master and maker, to offer the work of my hands. For this is the day you've given your servant. I will rejoice and be glad for the strength I have to live and breathe. For each skill your grace has given me, for the needs and opportunities that will glorify your great name. Before you I kneel and ask for your goodness to cover the work of my hands, for patience and peace to shape all my labor, your grace for thorns in my path, flow within me like a living stream, where away the storms of pride and greed, till your ways are dwelling deep. Harvest of life is grown. Before you we kneel, our master and maker, establish the work of our hands and order our steps to seek first your kingdom. In every small and great task, we live the gospel of your grace. Serve your purpose in our fleeting days. Then our lives will bring eternal praise and our glory to your great name. Join in us with singing, Spirit, Open My Heart. Spirit, open my heart to the joy and pain of living as you love. My stony heart with a heart that's kind and tender. All my goodness and fear to your grace I now surrender. Spirit, open my heart to the joy and pain of living as you long. your love upon my heart as my law my goal my story in each thought word and deed may my living bring you glory spirit open my heart to the joy and pain of living as you know in receiving and in giving spirit of and my heart may I weep with those who weep share the joy of sister brother in the welcome of Christ may we welcome one another spirit of my heart to the joy and pain of living as you love me I love in receiving and in living spirit
end and join in singing with us, Who is my mother? <laughs> it was my mother's birthday yesterday. I drove down to celebrate with her. <clears throat> my mother who is my brother all those who gather round Jesus Christ spirit blown people born from the gospel sit at the table round Jesus Christ differently able God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others through your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. reading from the gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, then the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were roused by the shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, Please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, We don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy the oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, Believe me, I don't know you. So, you too must keep watch, for you do not know the day or the hour of my return. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Together we pray from Psalm 130. We wait for you, O Lord. Our souls wait for you. And in your word do we hope. Amen. Please be seated. 
Three weeks ago, we listened as Jesus was confronted in the temple by the chief priests and the elders, and they confronted him with a tax question that we talked about. And we noted that it was in the context of Jesus' confrontation with those re religious leaders. And in the midst of that confrontation and that conflict, Jesus spoke three parables which were directed at them, against them, challenging them, criticizing them for their failure and refusal to recognize his authority as the Messiah and as the Son of the Father. Now here we are two chapters later and we find Jesus engaged in speaking not to the elders and the scribes, but to his disciples, to his followers. And it is to them and to us in the 21st century as his followers that he directs this parable about the kingdom of heaven. Now Jesus has taught many parables about the kingdom of heaven before. The kingdom is like a sower who sowed seed. The kingdom is like good seed that was sowed after which the enemy sowed weeds. The kingdom is like a mustard seed, like yeast, like a merchant in search of fine pearls, a gnat thrown into the sea, a landowner who went out to hire laborers. In every one of these parables, Jesus uses the present tense. The kingdom is like. But now, there's a change in the verb tense. Then the kingdom will be like future tense. So Jesus is talking now to his disciples, to his followers, about what will be coming. And it's important for us to note because this future tense, this will be, is a really important part of the faith that we confess. It's the culmination of what we call the second article of the Apostles' Creed. So when we recite the Creed in the second article, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. All past tense. And then there is the shift to the present. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And then future. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. The concluding affirmation, he will come again. And it is about that time that Jesus tells this parable to his disciples. To them, to us. The faith in Jesus that we live and share with others is rooted in the past, lived in the present, but always moving forward into the future. He will come again. This is our future hope. This is our future consolation for us, the church, the community of faith. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. And the Apostle Paul uses the same image in 1 Thessalonians 4. Then the community will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. When Jesus is revealed, the church will stand at his side. This is the promise of the parable. But along with the promise also comes a challenge, a question. The bridesmaids went out to meet the bridegroom. We are not just focused on the past while passively waiting in the present. No. Jesus is calling us. Jesus is inviting us. Jesus is commanding us to be active in going out to meet him as he comes. And as the ten bridesmaids went out to meet him, Jesus tells us five were wise and five were foolish. I will never forget the very first wedding that I performed after my ordination. It was at Kingsway Baptist Church in Etobicoke, and it was for the daughter of a family in our congregation. Now, the night before at the rehearsal, I had very strictly enforced the best man 
to make sure that he had the groom there a half hour before the ceremony. I said, I want him there at 1.30, and I want him sober. <laughs> well, Saturday came, the time for the wedding came, and right on time, the best man had the groom there, half hour before, and they joined me waiting in the study. At a quarter two, the organist went into the chancel and started to play the organ in the prelude. I went out to watch for the bride so that then I could take and lead the groom and the groomsmen into the sanctuary to wait for the procession. Well, no sign of the bride. Two o'clock, no bride. 2.15, 2.30, no bride. At this point, the organist has been playing nonstop for 45 minutes, and his arms are about ready to fall uh. off. 2.45, car slowly pulls up. Slowly, the bride gets out of the limousine. She was beautiful. She was graceful. She was beaming with joy and happiness, but she was not in a hurry. She took time to visit, to greet people who were milling about on the church lawn. She was taking her time. You can imagine what the groom was thinking and feeling. The wedding customs reflected in the parable are clearly different from ours, and we don't have time to explore them right now. But we note simply this, that the central figure in the parable is not the bride, who's not even mentioned actually in the parable. The central figure in the parable is the bridegroom, and he was delayed. The wise bridesmaids, having kept their lamps alight for a long time, apparently to no purpose, because there's no bridegroom who's arrived, become drowsy and they fall asleep but they had replenished their oils with lamp, with oil rather, and they could thus fulfill what they were supposed to do at that decisive moment when the bridegroom finally arrived. The foolish bridesmaids were also there with their lamps burning and shining, but they had not brought extra oil. And so as the bridegroom was delayed, their lamps are flickering out, and they are unable to meet and escort the bridegroom as they are supposed to do. And so the parable asks the question of us, of the church, of the community of faith, of whether we are wise or whether we are foolish, whether we are replenishing the oil in our lamps with which we shine our lights in the darkness as we go out to meet our coming Lord. There is a British folk pop musician that I've come to appreciate over the last few years. His name is Mike Rosenberg, but he performs under the name Passenger. And one of the songs that he wrote and released a few years ago is called All the Little Lights, in which he sings of the little lights in our lives, in our hearts, and how in various ways, those little lights go out. It's actually quite a sad and poignant song. But the words go like this about all the little lights. One went out at a bus stop in Edinburgh. One went out in an English park. One went out in a nightclub when I was 15. Little lights in my heart. One went out in the streets of Manchester one went out in an airport in Spain. One went out, I've no doubt, when I grew up and moved out of the place where the boy used to play. One went out when Uncle Ben got his tumor. We used to fish, and I fish no more. Though he will not return, I know one still burns on a fishing boat off the New Jersey shore. We're born with millions of little lights shining in the dark, and they show us the way. One lights up every time we feel love in our hearts. One dies when it moves away. There are all kinds of 
ways and circumstances in which the little lights in our hearts, in our lives, in our witness, go out. And that's the presupposition of the parable, along with the question that it asks. Do you have the oil with which to replenish the light within you so that your lamp can be shining when Jesus comes? One of the recurring images of Jesus throughout the Bible is that of light. He is the light of the world. He is the light who comes into the world, who shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. It is Jesus himself from whom we receive the oil with which to keep our lamps lit. It is in listening to Jesus in his word. It is in talking to Jesus in prayer. It is in sharing the light and life and love of Jesus with others. It is in being nourished at Jesus' table that our oil is replenished and that our lamps can continue burning, burning and shining when he will come again. Let us pray. May the light of Christ, the King of all, shine ever brighter in our hearts, that with all the saints in light, we may shine forth as lights in the world. Amen. We have a special guest singer with us this evening. Reverend Martha is her, not stage name, but <laughs> chancel name. You are holy, you are whole, you are always evermore than we ever understand. You are always at hand. Blessed are you coming near. Blessed are you coming here to your church in wine and bread, raised from soil, raised from dead. You are holy. Creator God, you made everything, and you provide for every need. The bread we break and the wine we pour come from you. As we eat and drink with thanksgiving, fill us with your love. Let that love flow through us to others, and join us to the saints before us in holy communion. Through Jesus our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We offer you praise, dear God, with hearts lifted high. For in the communion of your love, Christ comes close to us, and we come close to Christ. Therefore, with the whole realm of nature around us, with earth, sea, and sky, we sing to you. With the angels of light who envelop us, with Michael and the host of heaven, with all the saints before us and beside us, with brothers and sisters east and west, we sing to you. And with our loved ones separate from us now, who yet in this mystery are close to us, we join in the song of your unending greatness. Holy, 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 my heart, my heart adores you. My heart is glad to say the words you are holy. Blessed is our brother Jesus, who walks with us the road of our world's suffering, and who is known to us in the breaking of bread. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread, and having blessed it, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. In the same way, he took the wine, and having given thanks for it, he poured it out and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new relationship with God, sealed with my blood. Take this and share it. I shall drink wine with you next in the coming kingdom of God. Loving God, it is through your goodness that we have this bread and wine to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. In the sharing of this bread, may we know your resurrection presence, and may we know that in touching all bread, all matter, it is you that we touch. Hear us now, O Christ, and breathe your spirit upon us and upon this bread and wine. May they become for us your body, vibrant with your life, healing, renewing, and making us whole. And as the bread and wine which we now eat and drink are changed into us, may we be changed again into you, bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh, loving and caring in the world. Amen. Gathering all of our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the table at which God is host and all are welcome guests. These are the gifts of God for the whole people of God.
Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross, as Jesus died, For every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his. And he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever block me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. Bread of life, feed my soul. As the presence of the Spirit makes me whole. Bread of life, fill my with the grace and mercy you impart. I have heard your voice calling. Come, my friend, and share in the feast that is laid out for you to show how much I care. Bread of life, help me live. A life as pure and true as Jesus did. Bread of life, help me see the boundless love of Christ for you and me. can't help falling in love with you. <laughs>
<laughs> well, I'm sure Jesus said it before Elvis did. <laughs> Please join in singing this song of love to the glory of love itself. Thank you all for being here this evening and thank you to all of our leaders this evening thank you so much to Mari and Gary and thank you to Rob we very much appreciate all that you offer in our faith journey this evening I want to draw a couple of upcoming dates to your attention and then I want to ask for your help and uh, ask you to put on your thinking caps a little bit so, um, upcoming dates, this coming Sunday is Remembrance Sunday. We have an opportunity to remember those who died, especially in the, uh, the two great wars of the last century, and to pray for peace in our world. And we have some very special music in our worship service this coming Sunday, so we hope that you will all hear that invitation to be part of that special service this Sunday at 10 a.m. Um, I need your help with uh, getting the word out about our Christmas Bazaar. The Christmas Bazaar is our biggest fundraiser, so it's a big part of how we support the ministry and outreach of St. George's. And um, tonight is a prime example of the outreach that happens every day in this community. So if you can help us just get out the word about that bazaar, um, and if you can bring friends and come out to it, you won't be disappointed. It's a wonderful event, but it is really integral to the ministry of St. George's as well. And, uh, and finally, at the end of November, we have our big gala homecoming weekend and uh, our homecoming Sunday services. So please hear me invite each and every one of you to be with us at the end of November as we celebrate the 225th anniversary of St. George's. Quite an extraordinary milestone for a church in uh, this part of the world. So please do join us for that Sunday. Now, here's where I need you to put on your thinking caps and uh, to be willing to do a little bit of discernment with me because I have some ideas about Advent Cafe going forward, but, uh, but it, it needs to be a team effort. So number one, we have all of the equipment to set up um, overheads for uh, this room 
so that we don't have to have sheets that we're rustling around the whole time. Everything w that you need for worship would just be up on the overheads. You'd have all of the lyrics for all of the songs. Um, I think it would be just a huge improvement in our worship and make it so much more accessible for people coming in. They'd know exactly what's happening in our worship. But you know what? We need a team of people who are willing to take on the responsibility of preparing those overheads and then running the overheads, the PowerPoints in our service. So I am looking for some people to step up and say, yeah, I think that that would be great and I'd like to be part of that. So that's number one. Number two, um, you've noticed this fall, I hope, that we've started having a question that we leave people with or that is kind of the center of our sermon reflection in the evening. And uh, we've had a, a group of young people who have started to gather after Advent Cafe and consider what they heard in our worship and talk about that question. And inevitably, that question leads to lots of other conversation. And uh, that's been quite a good thing, I think, for all of us involved to feel like worship is a little bit more interactive and that uh, we have a chance to respond to what we hear and talk about in the service. It's a two-way street. So here's my idea, is I would like to um, have a, a study group after Advent Cafe for people who aren't in the 17 to 25 age range, for kind of everybody else who would like to feel like they get to respond to... Uh, to the sermon in Advent Cafe, and I also would like ideas about some sermon series that you would be interested in talking about. Is there a part of the Bible that you would really like to explore more? Um, would you like to have a sermon series on, like, women in the Bible? Would you like to have a sermon series on um, King David? Would you like to have a sermon series on Genesis? Sorry, what's that? Children? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. I'd like to hear your ideas. What would you get excited about uh, hearing about in Advent Cafe and then having an opportunity to reflect on afterwards? And are you somebody who maybe um, has the gifts of leadership and would be willing to be part of facilitating that conversation afterwards? So those are some of my ideas. I ask you to pray about them. I ask you to think about them. Let me know what excites you, what interests you, and how you could see yourself getting involved. Okay? Deal? Deal. Last song. <laughs> Please stand and get ready to swing low. <laughs> swing low, sweet chariot, come and for to carry me.
was Jesus' parting gift to his disciples. As a sign of that gift, going out into the world in his name, we share the sign of peace with one another, exchanging handshakes or high fives or hugs or other appropriate greetings. The peace of Christ be with you. And also